Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and if you have $16 million to spare, Tom, Brendan, maybe, I have the perfect gift for you. Take a look at this 100 carat graph, a vivid yellow diamond. Unfortunately, though, gentlemen, it already sold for $16.3 million last year at auction, but if you are in the market for this kind of rock, or perhaps I should say glacier, there is only one <laughs> place to shop, and that is graph. Henri Bagajan is the president and CEO of Graph Diamonds Americas. Henry, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for lending me this <laughs> unbelievably gorgeous $9 million 30 carat square That's right. ring. Um, it's hard for me to think while this is on my finger, but I would like to know how strong, how strong is the market for a $10 million ring? Well, actually, surprisingly enough, the market is very strong. Really? Uh, yeah, I mean, everything that is really high quality very rare stone. The demand, not only in America, but around the world, is quite strong. How long is the list of clients for something like this? When something comes <laughs> into the store, do you already know who you're going to call? Yeah, we, all, yeah we, 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 have, we have obviously clients all around the world, and uh, when we get such a rare stone, which obviously is not yeah. that often, uh, yeah, we know, we know who, to, who to call, who to speak to, and... and uh, uh, Henri, sometimes I'm amazed when people come on this show that there's a level of luxury so high that before they come on the show, I didn't even know it existed. So Graf was news to me, for which I apologize. But, you know, other than Olivia Stearns, you don't generally put your jewels on celebrities. Why not? No, we don't because we are a very high-end brand. We sell an exclusive product at very high prices to fantastic people. And I think that if I can loan it or if anybody can borrow such expensive jewelry, mm. it kind of defeats the purpose. But you advertise in the Wall Street Journal. I advertise, of course, but there's a difference between I advertise because I need my brand to be known, and, and I know I'm always why, looking for new clients. Why but buy it's the almost cow? an insult to my client <laughs> if anybody can borrow it. I'm sorry. <gasps> why buy the cow when you can get the ice for free? But that's a, di that's a completely <laughs> different. Sure. Okay. Well, a what's completely the average different. price of a transaction at Graph? Obviously, this is 150,000. 150,000. Starts at 15,000 all the way up to 9 million or 16. Like I'm sorry, did you point at her finger and say 9 million? Yes. That's $9 million? It's a 30 Nine carat million. gem. Oh, my God. Can I talk about the low end of the market? You, you, sir, you, you're the class act here of bringing in uh, one of your entry-level diamonds, which is $20,000, yes. right? Yes. Why should someone buy this gorgeous small statement yes. versus the 90% of the riffraff that's out there? Sell me on why I should step up because. to your entry-level diamond versus the garbage that's out there. <laughs> okay, I'll explain to you in two seconds. Please. Because... Lawrence Graff's passion for diamonds all his life, he devoted all his life to that. And what we do, the magic is in the way you cut a diamond. This is what makes a difference. Where are they cut? We have four cutting centers in Johannesburg, in Botswana, in Antwerp, and in New York. And when anybody, let's say, from a three-carat piece of rough is going to cut a one-and-a-half carat or a 1.7 mediocre diamond, Lawrence doesn't care if it only weighs one carat, but it's mm -hmm. a perfect, perfect stone. This is why when people come to our stores, they're always amazed at how brilliant, how extraordinary they are. They always think we do something funny about the lighting. No, it's because faint. we cut them to perfection. That's what makes the difference in the value. Have you what ever you... had a customer faint? Uh, <laughs> almost, but <laughs> usually they manage to keep the composure. Talk to me about the colored stones, because the colored stones are even more expensive than the clear ones. I believe we have a chart showing some of the most expensive jewels uh, you've ever sold. We have a 31 carat blue diamond, a 102 carat uh, graph constellation classic, and the yellow Del Air sunrise. What should we know about these rocks? Well, the blue stone is an extremely rare diamond. It was mined in the late 1600s by Tavernier. And he sold it. It's the same gentleman who found the Hope Diamond. Mm. And he sold the Vitos Bar in the late 1600s to the King of Spain. And the stone has actually an unbelievable story. And we, we bought it back four years ago. If I go into Tiffany's right now, I can't buy anything in red. There are no rubies because of the different bands on Burma and Miramar That's true. and rubies. How do you deal with that? Do you tell a customer to go to Zurich to buy a ruby? Or can they do it <laughs> through you here on Madison Avenue? No, in America, there is an embargo on, on Burmese ruby. The only way to find a Burmese ruby is on an antique piece of jewelry that was... Is that embargo working? Does it have any validity when somebody can... Maury Harris wants a, a ruby, he can go to UBS London and pick up the ruby? Uh, you, can, you, can, you can always try it and, and go around the system and do whatever you want, but as a jeweler, I cannot import a Burmese ruby in America. It's against mm -hmm. the law. Okay. So that's, that's the end of it.
Mari Harris, help me out here. I'm sandwiched right now between a Bloomberg monitor that shows GDP in America sort of falling off a cliff and heading in a new direction about five years ago, and I am looking at a $9 million diamond, and evidently demand for that is unabated. Tell me what this means about the American economy. Well, what it means is that there's a big difference between wealth and income, mm -hmm. that uh, in the last couple of years, you've had tremendous booms in the property markets, a tremendous boom in the stock market, mm -hmm. so the people who have benefited from that can buy this gentleman's diamonds. Uh, for, 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 the, uh, for the most part, though, uh, the economy has grown very slowly, and most Americans haven't seen their incomes go up. But uh, the, there's a very important wealth effect that mm -hmm. we've had the last couple of years, and people are spending that wealth on his diamonds. All right, tell me yeah. about the metal that's on, wrapped around the diamond. Is white in now? Is yellow gold coming back? What's, what's the thing people are, what's the trend right now? No, diamonds are set white diamonds are set in platinum or white gold and, <clears throat> and yellow diamonds obviously you put you put a yellow what's called the basket around it so that it doesn't interfere with the color of the stone mm -hmm. what's your fastest growing market uh it, it it was until a couple of months ago it was asia yeah. obviously uh and now everybody in the luxury world s seems to have their eye on america yeah uh we we kind of rediscover america don't forget that 50 percent of all diamond jewelry in the world is still sold in the usa all right well Henri, thank you so much for loaning this you've got to go off to print it. right now right yeah no i've got to go <laughs> <laughs> don't worry i got security i'll give it back next week <laughs> thank you so much for joining us you're most welcome thank you for having me.